Oh, uh, we should put this link in. Starting record. Okay, we're recording. Okay, I hear you. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast on the In Thirty Network. This is episode one twenty one, which we're calling Bad AV. AV for antivirus, and just a lot of stuff has come out in the last few weeks about antivirus a lot of it means absolutely nothing to you but i think it's a good refresher to talk about why we don't like antivirus from the really simplistic point of view to all the way through these technical ideas of uh, that that really really shows the problem of what antivirus how bad antivirus is and we're not saying uh, we don't want you to go to best buy or your parents and say oh these two guys on the internet said don't run antivirus that's not what we're saying but what we're saying is listen and see maybe maybe the idea of not running it will outweigh the benefits of running it and everything else so let's bring tom in and i think we're going to start with what is antivirus and how it works just from the beginning so antivirus um and i, I wish i had like a, a funny quip for this but i don't have anything prepared or, or thought up on the spot but uh what av basically does is it looks at um things that are the good avs will look at things that are running in memory so processes um executables and, and say okay is this thing doing something that's bad and bad can mean a lot of things they've got a list of heuristics saying you know is this using these system functions or operating in this manner. And it's it's kind of a behavior-based analysis. Some antivirus um, will rely on signatures and they'll say, hey, does this executable meet this hash? Now that was a really old way of doing AV and they've really moved on to heuristic and behavior-based analysis now. Um, so they can catch stuff that they haven't seen in the wild before, uh, which works sometimes, doesn't work other times. It's kind of hit or miss. Uh, the thing you have to realize about antivirus is it's a cat and mouse game. Uh, the, the virus makers will go and put out new malware, uh, to evade all the AV and AV is going to run and catch up. And it's been that way forever. And it will continue to be that way in the foreseeable future. I believe some people think that next generation antivirus and perimeter boxes will be able to stop malware infections, but I think it's a pie in the sky idea. I think it's, it's great research. It should totally be done. Uh, but I'm not hopeful for the future of antivirus. Um, for one, watching everything in memory, watching everything that hits your hard disk, watching everything that all of your applications do is really intensive. Uh, it's memory intensive, it's processor intensive, it's disk intensive. And if you've got a slow disk and you're spending all your time you know, searching and, and looking around for viruses, you're taking away resources from the computer and the things that the user wants it to do. Um, I know certain antiviruses and companies I've worked at have brought machines grinding to a halt on their weekly scan because the disks just weren't fast enough to keep up. Um, well, we've had that. I mean, in at work, virus scans are every Tuesday at 10 a.m., right in the middle of my programming session. And when you're running two, two gigs or three gigs on a Windows 7 machine, it really does grind it to a halt. But my problem was, and I saw this early on, without any technical know-how, was the virus is already on your system. That That's my biggest problem. How do we know? how? So first, if you're going to write a virus, aren't you going to write it? You're going to have Norton there, and you're going to see what they're doing, and you're going to try and bypass it. You're going to try and hide something that they can't scan. I would think these virus makers have the virus there and have Norton try to scan it. And you only need to, inf and then the first thing you obviously do is then you uh, you block the Norton and Semantic IP so you can't even download anything, which also causes problems. But it just seemed to never work. Anytime somebody get a virus, I would run it and I would search on the internet and I would find out, oh, this virus scan doesn't do it. You have to use this one. Oh, this one doesn't do it. You have to use this one. And now you're going to like really shady sites that guarantee to move this specific map piece of malware. And it was just, you know what? If you had a good backup, the best thing you can do is just reformat and you'll be up in three hours. Coincidentally, the amount of time it took the virus scan to find it and do anything with it. Yeah, and a lot of the time when your virus scanner will find something and kill it, you're not guaranteed. You're never guaranteed to completely get rid of the virus, right? Um, so what will happen is your virus scanner will go out and will say, ah, oh, cool, we found this guy and we wiped it from your system. But then there's like three others that it spawned, like child programs, child executables. It's littered all over your hard disk. They're set to start up. Um, they'll run and they've got 
weird names like SVC host to blend into the Windows environment, and you won't ever know unless you're really, really looking hard for it, or your AV is pretty clever. Um, so you're never guaranteed with AV to have a clean system. It's kind of one of those things that most Windows users do. Most Windows users will run antivirus just to run antivirus because that's an expected thing to do. But, you know, starting with Windows 8, you don't really have to anymore. But we'll get into that later. I mean, I look at it as every, if you lived in an apartment building, you've gotten roaches before. And you call the maintenance person and they do whatever they need to do to get rid of the roaches. And you're not sure that they're completely gone. You just know that you don't see it. And then six months later, you see another one. And you don't know if they've got everything or this is how long it takes to repopulate. Different things like that. Look at it as an infestation. Are you sure you got rid of everything? Because if one thing's there, it's just going to continue again. Right. And that's actually a really, really good way to put that, because even if a little part of the virus is left over, if it's a part that's designed to propagate and spread throughout the system, it will with a vengeance. So so for me, we, and you said this after Windows 7 or 8, I mean, Microsoft has it built in. I think it's it used to be called my security essentials. And it doesn't start up all the time, but it does its scan. It's very, very low key about it. You probably don't even know it's happening. And what people like to do is when they get their new computer, they get their three months of Norton AV as like a trial. Put it on five machines, you get three months or a year free. And now you're having competing antivirus, which is always a problem. So now one's finding something and the other one isn't, and it's slowing down your machine. And it's just a problem. Yeah, with... You know, as far as antivirus goes, and we can talk about good companies, bad companies, um, there's a lot of bad, there's a little good, and there's a decent amount in between. But uh, Security Essentials on Windows 7, um, I think it stopped working for XP, I believe, as soon as XP went out of service. Um, or Defender, which is built into 8 and above. Um, it stays in the background, it gets its antivirus updates through Windows Update, which you're already running because everyone's running Windows Update. Um, and it's it's really resource light. Uh, it does a decent enough job. Uh, it's not the best AV on the planet, but that's good enough for most people. You're not getting vi if you followed the rules from I don't know since Sir XP Service Pack two. If you when you got cable, you were behind a router. If you are not running IE six and you're running Firefox and you keep every or Chrome and you're keeping everything updated, for the most part, you're going to be fine. I haven't had too many people that said oh, I've got a virus. What I have heard is they've installed junk that's really caught them by surprise. Right now, the main virus that we see is uh, ransomware, and not too many of my friends have hit it. Basically, we've told them so many times, don't download this, don't download that, and they're taking that call. So yes, I haven't seen too many things. All I've seen are people trying to hijack social media accounts. Yeah, and that's, that's really common. Uh, taking over, getting a virus that takes over your accounts uh, and use it to spam other people and propagate itself through Facebook messages or, or Twitter messages is really, really common today. Um, you see it a lot with Facebook accounts that you run something and it posts a message as your, you know, yourself on Facebook, sending it to all of your contacts saying, hey, I saw this cool video, click this link. And the video website that's compromised, you know, that's usually a WordPress site that's compromised, says, oh, your Flash player's on a date. Uh, run this EXE. Here, here, run this file and you run it and now you're infected. Uh, and then the process starts all over again. Um, Facebook is, is actually really good about blocking that kind of stuff uh, when they get some reports of, hey, this is malicious, this is doing this. When they see that behavior, they, when they see a bunch of messages saying exactly the same thing with the exact same URL, uh, they can swat it down real quick, which is nice. Um, but you know, with, with AV, it's not guaranteed to catch that. Um, uh, viruses have to be around for a little bit before AV will understand, okay, this is a bad thing. And because the virus makers have got all the AV products, right? They're all testing their software before they release it upon the world. They know what's gonna catch it, what's not gonna catch it, and what's an acceptable risk. It's, uh, it's, but basically, again, you look at it, what's the point of a virus? They're trying to use your computer to do something, to, to throw traffic at a different website, but it's turned out to, how can we make money? So they make money by showing you ads. So the virus makers are now 
think think from their side how do we make money with this so clearly making money is showing you ads or getting you to send other people ads so that's why we say i don't think people are going after the, the machine anymore but more so your social media accounts where they can spam everyone on there with ray-ban sunglasses and a kai berry cleanse and all these other things so so the days of getting something that infects your computer they're still there by all means they're still there but it's so much harder people are smarter you always hear don't click on this don't do this don't surf to these sites and most of that advice is correct but but they've learned that over time and it's just getting harder and harder yeah and one of the most common infection vectors that we talk about all the time are compromised ad frames and every ad provider has this has this issue where someone will take out an ad it'll be loaded with you know 17 tons of javascript and one of those things contains a zero day exploit for your browser it runs a drive-by download and now you're infected there's you know nothing you can do about it you were just searching you know the register or cnn or forbes was in a very high profile case about people were just reading the news after forbes said hey could you turn off your ad blocker so you can read this article People turned off their ad blocker. They got hit with the drive-by download. Now they're infected. Yeah, run an ad blocker. Don't use IE. Uh, that's that's really really core advice. And it's sad to say, don't use IE. But Microsoft really hasn't taken the time to go at, to fix it in that way. I mean, Chrome and Firefox both run flat uh, block Flash natively, and you'd have to actually click something to do, see a Flash ad. They lo- auto load PDFs. So they do the risk and they just show you the text. So they're doing all these things that really protect you. Yeah. So and they're updated. What's... And they're updated. They're and constantly they're updated. updated. Yeah. Uh, Edge, Edge is getting better. I, I can't really knock Edge. It's fast. <laughs> it's fairly low resource, um, but it doesn't have the community around it, building extensions and, and stuff for it yet. Um, but AV, why is AV bad? If it's it's not hurting you, why wouldn't you run AV other than the cost of running AV? Well, it can hurt you. Uh, and in a couple of high profile cases, it has hurt people uh, a lot. So Google has famously got this project called Project Zero, where they hire a bunch of security researchers to attack a bunch of software, open source stuff, closed source stuff, doesn't matter, attack everybody all the time forever. and. When they find a vulnerability, they start a stopwatch and they say, hey, um, you have got 90 days to fix this. If in 90 days it's not fixed or it is fixed, we're going public with the exploit. So get on it. And Google has been bitten by this before. There was actually a problem found internally at Google, found by Project Zero, that expired and the 90-day window lapsed and it became public. So Google had to really rush to fix it. So they're not playing favorites with companies and they don't make exceptions. It's a really cool project. But anyway, they've been targeting antivirus recently, which is fantastic. And it turns out AV itself is opening your machine up to a world of hurt, uh, to all kinds of badness from uh, buffer overflows that allow the malware to run as uh, as something with system level permissions to totally own your box uh, to a uh, an HTTP server running and open on all ports, uh, listening. Um, so someone can say, hey, uh, system, could you run this binary for me? Could you run this program? And the AV will just take it and run it without any care in the world, without prompting you, without anything, and run it with admin level permissions. This is a huge issue. Um, so recently, uh, what hit the news is that uh, Norton Antivirus, Symantec, has got a, uh, a big problem uh, with memory corruption, with uh, what looks like a buffer overflow. So what this is, is when their system uh, will go to unpack a, uh, a file and check it, uh, sometimes that can lead to corruption and then remote execution. Uh, so you could send someone a, a, a clearly infected file, Symantec will open it up, try to check it out, freak out, and then run the code that's inside of it. It's a really simplistic way of explaining it. The, the code and the example is a lot more involved than that, but basically it means that someone sending you an infected file can infect you when your AV just looks at it. That's, look, it's, uh, it's, it's bad because 
Like you said, you're trying to solve a problem and you're causing more issues. And just the fact that if you take AV and they keep on saying, oh, this website, just the lock. Remember when you have Chrome and it gives you the lock or when Norton says, we've noticed that you've downloaded something. Are you sure you want to download this or Windows? And I forgot the name of it. The thing that pops up UAC uh, access control comes up and says, are you sure? you're going to do this. The other, the next problem is, is that human psychology dictates that you're just going to keep on clicking. Yes, 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 yes. Just let me. And then at some point you're going to disable it. So you're going to learn how to disable it, or you're just going to keep on clicking. Yes. Without worrying about what's actually going on, which can also cause problems. And that's thanks to the antivirus. That's just constantly bombarding you with issues that are not really issues for you to deal with. Right. It's, it's a huge problem. Um, and actually, some uh, a little bit of uh, errata here, which I found uh, really entertaining, is that with Symantec, they actually didn't receive the vulnerability uh, the first time uh, Tavis Ormandy sent it, because he sent it, their mail server got the, the zip file, which he had password protected with the word infected, uh, which is a password that uh, AV companies use to send each other samples. Um, it unpacked the file by using that common password and it actually crashed the mail server daemon that was inspecting it. So Symantec couldn't, didn't even get the email with the thing in it because it had crashed their system because it was that kind of overflow. Um, <laughs> I found it absolutely hilarious. So we had to specify a randomly generated password that the mail server couldn't open easily uh, to get around that. It's... I mean, it's the problem is, is when you find them, no antivirus wants to admit that they have a vulnerability in their code that's actually bad. So that's the problem with Project Zero is that they're they're going to deny, deny, deny. And Project Zero is going to say, you know what? You have 90 days. We don't care. And we're going to go live with it. And then you're going to have to figure it out in 90 days when everyone's looking at you, where your business may be compromised or anything else. And the problem is they're sending... Here's my question. Where do you send this to? You found the vulnerability. Where is there like a vulnerability department at Symantec or at Norton? Yes. Yes, there is, actually. Uh, several big companies that release high-profile software will have security people on staff, or at least security mining developers on staff. Now, this isn't true for all companies, and it really needs to be true in more companies. That they, companies need to have a security department, especially if you're putting out uh, applications or programs, or you're doing anything online, if you're a service provider selling something online, you need to have a place where you say, hey, vulnerabilities, uh, email, you know, security at semantech.com or whatever, something like that. Um, I have actually submitted uh, a couple issues that I found, small things, nothing giant, uh, to companies. Uh, and I've said, hey, um, can you give me your PGP key? Some companies will have a PGP key on, on their site. So in case our email gets intercepted, uh, you know, the vulnerability isn't made public, uh, which is great. And I've sent in vulnerabilities like that and they've gotten fixed later. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Uh, but yeah, these companies do have security people sitting around and waiting for those reports to come in. Some companies, the really forward thinking companies, think Facebook, Twitter, Google, they'll have bug bounties, which will say, hey, Report the vulnerabilities to us, and we'll give you a cash prize. Uh, because what happens with these big vulnerabilities is if uh, if you find a Facebook exploit that uh, could be used to spam everyone or to take over any account, um, you can then take that to the black market and sell it for a ton of money. Uh, Facebook and other companies want to cut that off at the head and say, hey, don't give the evil people money we will pay you for the exploit and then we'll fix it. It's a great way to do things. I mean, Charlie Miller famously got hired by Apple and Twitter and all these companies just not to get hacked by. So those companies wouldn't actually get hacked by him. But the problem is that it looks like in some of these project zero, some of these uh, transcripts have been released where the guy has gotten to a customer service representative or somebody who doesn't know what's going on. And, and the chat description is hilarious. It's, it's, it's no, we're super secure. We have testing and no, no, I found this. No, you're wrong. And they go back and forth like that. Yeah. If, if you work in, uh, you know, in, security products at all. You should know what Project Zero is. You should know who Tavis Ormandy is. Um, and you should dread ever seeing the Project Zero email come into your inbox, right? If, Like at my company, if I ever see a Project Zero uh, email come in, I'm going to 
you know, I'll be running around the office with my hair on fire because that's not an email you want to get. Uh, that means that there's something wrong and that you've got 90 days to fix it or else. Um, and so uh, another another AV that we have to say, um, do not use Trend Micro. If you know someone who's using Trend Micro, if you've installed Trend Micro somewhere, God forbid if your business is using Trend Micro, use literally anything else. You can go down to whatever local supermarket you have and pick up Bob's antivirus, and that will be better than Trend Micro. Uh, so we've talked about this before, but Trend Micro had a massive, well, really just a, a huge list of giant issues uh, with their antivirus products uh, on the consumer side, which they they have a running service on your computer that's listening for connections. So they're, it's basically a web server. And you can say, hey, uh, system, could you run this file when you're on the outside? <laughs> you can send a file to the system and say, hey, could you run this for me? And the AV will just run the application with admin level permissions, with system level, uh, which is the highest level of permissions that you can get in a Windows box. So it'll run that with system level permissions and totally own the box. Uh, and it, there was just Trend Micro went back and forth saying, oh, we fixed it. And Tavis came back and said, no, you just renamed the thing I was trying to attack. It's just called this now. It's not fixed at all. Uh, and Trend Micro just didn't get it. It did eventually get fixed, I will tell you. But the fact that they let that get out of development, the fact that they let that idea even spring forth in their heads should be enough to avoid that AV altogether. Um, it will get into recommendations here in a little bit, but Trend Micro, just stay away. Komodo, get as far away from Komodo as you can. Uh, they came out with a secure browser, um, which was not. It was just a, an ancient build of Chromium, complete with security defects, uh, with sandboxing turned off. So any one tab can hack another tab, and that's just not possible in good builds of Chrome. What we're finding out is a lot of these companies are calling what or what we're going to call man in the middle attack so in order to scan what you're doing they're inserting their own certificate that's the green lock next to the url that where you're thinking you're connecting to whatever website you are no no, no you're connecting to them and then they're connecting to to uh, the website and they're scanning all your traffic in order to be proactive not all of them do it but in fact as we go as as the time gets longer, we're finding that more and more companies are doing this. And we said this with Lenovo with Superfish, which wasn't AV. It was just normal software. Komodo was doing this. And it just – so when I hear it, I say, oh, again, another reason to not use antivirus. Because in trying to, to watch what you're doing, they're now watching everything. Right. Uh, AVG actually has started doing this. They will uh, – as you tell them specifically not to do. Um, they will send off all of your web history back to the company. Um, so do not use AVG unless you want all of your web history to be spewed forth into the company and then God knows where else. Um, so there's lots of bad AV out there, but what can you do, right? Um, if you're on Windows 8 or above, right, 8.1, 10, um, get rid of your antivirus. You don't need it. Uh, it's built in today. They renamed Microsoft Security Essentials. They uh, merged it into Windows Defender, uh, and it's actually pretty good. It's really the only AV you need. It stays in the background. You never have to look at it. It will clean up things for you without you even having to worry about it. Um, now, if you would like a paid AV, um, ESETs, Nod32 has generally been a good choice. Um, I haven't had much luck with the free ones. Um, Kaspersky tends to get generally higher marks, but... I don't run AV on my Windows machines. I run, if I'm on Windows 7, I run Microsoft Security Essentials. If I'm on uh, Windows 8 or above, I just let Defender take care of it. Uh, if I'm on XP, I'm not. Uh, and that's it's really all there is to it. It stays out of your way. It does a decent enough job. It gets automatic updates. It doesn't bog your system down because it's made by Microsoft and it's really tailored to stay in the background and, and not be too onerous because Microsoft doesn't want people shutting off the antivirus. Um, it's it's a great product, and you don't pay a dime for it. Which one is this? Uh, Windows Defender. Oh, right. Windows Defender, okay. Look, I'm also in favor of Windows Defender for the same reasons, because I don't, if I'm running, if I have an AV for whatever reason, it's because 
I feel like I have a virus. So I will download it at that time where I think I have something and let it go because I've never, ever had an antivirus, even back in the day, say, oops, we're noticing that this is a virus. I've never gotten the proactive, this is a virus, don't download. So it's always retroactive. And if it's retroactive, it's already on my system. So let me download it then. And there, there are major issues, even if an AV is working correctly and doesn't have a security vulnerability in it, which is rare. Um, AV has had major, major issues in the past. So to single out McAfee, because we haven't picked on McAfee a lot here, and I love picking on McAfee. Um, they had an issue way back in the day where they just deleted all the fonts on your Windows system. So you would boot up your system, and instead of text, you would see just a bunch of outlined rectangles. Um, which is, is fun to navigate around. Now, if you're like me and you had the, you know, the Windows interface memorized at that point, you could really work around it. Uh, and I got the fonts to reload after we updated the AV to fix that issue. But it was still a massive issue. Uh, McAfee had a giant issue a couple of years back where they deleted Windows system files that prevented the system from booting. Uh, it is a major issue. And McAfee is not the only one who does this, right? All AV vendors mess up from time to time. Uh, but why would you take that chance? Why wouldn't you go to Microsoft itself, which isn't going to delete its system fonts, which isn't going to delete uh, files important to Windows? Um, I, I don't see a reason to buy AV or to use free AV today other than what's built into your system on Windows 8 and above. On 7, Go out and download Microsoft Security Essentials, and it'll take care of you. But I don't see a reason to, to go beyond that. I think it works well enough. And now, if you're on the Mac side, there, Apple handles all of this. Do not download any antivirus. Yes. And if, if you're on Linux, uh, don't worry about it. Okay. Um, no one targets Linux right now. There's like six people in the world that use it. I'm one of them. Uh, and no one writes viruses for Linux today. Okay. At least not, not many. But going back to OS X... On the Mac side, again, it's a footprint thing. If a virus person is going to do something, why are they going to target five, four and a half percent of the market when Windows is 94% of the market? So there's no reason for them to necessarily target you. Yes, there have been Mac viruses, but if you're doing everything you're supposed to do and keeping updated, you're probably not the person who's going to get it. And again, it's if you're if you're blocks if you block scripting and you're using an updated browser and everything else. Last time there was a virus, I think like ten thousand people got infected, which doesn't sound like a small number, but in the in the amount of people using a computer, that's a very small number. So for OS ten, let Apple do it. They're they're really good about keeping things up to date and everything else. And believe me, they have no problem issuing an update when it needs to happen. They will make you, they will just have this, your app store will launch. It's another reason for them to get you to use the app store and everything else. And I, by no means on any of the mobile phone platforms ever download an antivirus. There is no. no use for any of them. They just slow it down and actually have bad effects on it. Yeah. They, okay. Antivirus on iOS, uh, I don't believe is a thing. I don't think that exists. If it does, just don't, don't get it. Um, Android antivirus is a huge market right now and i have no idea why they literally don't do anything they can't do anything uh, what because you're downloading an app from the play store it is sandboxed from the rest of the apps which means it can't go in and look at processes or memory or files it has its own little world and it can't get out of it it literally has no power the only thing it does is it looks at the list of apps you have installed and says oh well, this one's got like more ads than usual and it's kind of spammy. So, of course, they, they have that in red. They say, you might want to get rid of that, but it can't do it on its own. It's got to, you know, suggest that you uninstall it. So, look out AV. Basically, every single Android antivirus out there is a sham. Unless you're downloading it and running it as root, it has literally no power over your machine. Look, uh, an app like Lookout, don't use for the AV protection. If you're using Lookout, you're using it to find your phone. And if you're using it to find your phone or to wipe the phone, use Android Device Manager. It's native and it's yeah. built in. Same in iOS. You find out the features and see if your platform has that same thing built in. You're going to find out that it does. And maybe this company is slightly better than a different company, but built in and native is always better than a third party. Yeah. So mobile antivirus right 
Chanel is a complete 100% sham. They're selling you snake oil, uh, and I have ruffled some feathers by saying that in the past, and I will continue to because I have not seen any evidence to the contrary. And same with task killers and memory managers and registry yep. cleaners or defraggers or any of that. None of that. Let Windows handle it. Let OS 10 handle it. Let your version of Linux handle it. Let your phone handle it. You'll be much better. Yep. Okay. Always go with the native if you can. So, okay. At this point, we're out of time. So we will see everyone next week. See you, everyone. everyone.